Greetings, fellow seekers of wisdom. Today, we embark on a profound journey through the pages of The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Join me as we delve into the opening chapter, where Tolle gently unfolds the transformative revelation, You are not your mind. The author begins the book by reflecting on his earlier life, marked by significant frustrations, tension, depression, anxiety, and anger. At that time, he felt trapped and thought, I can't live with myself. Surprisingly, this marked the beginning of his journey toward enlightenment. The key question emerged, if you believe you can't live with yourself, are you one or two? In this introspection, he realized that he was conversing with his mind, seeing himself as distinct from it. This revelation led to the understanding that you are not your mind. Later, when he discovered a pathway to happiness, he started sharing his experiences. He emphasized to everyone, you already have it. The problem is that you can't feel it because your mind is creating too much noise. I cannot tell you any spiritual truth that you don't already know deep within. My role is simply to remind you of what you have forgotten. The living knowledge, ancient yet ever new, is then activated and released from within every cell of your body. It's not about searching for happiness, approval, security, or love externally, rather, we actually have a valuable treasure within us. This inner treasure includes all those things and is far greater than anything the world can provide. Tall uttered the Buddha's straightforward view of enlightenment as the end of suffering. But what remains when suffering is no more? The Buddha doesn't spell it out. His silence suggests you'll need to discover it for yourself. The author uses the term being. Being refers to the eternal, ever-present one life, beyond the various forms of life that experience birth and death. The author avoids using the word God because it has lost its meaning over many years of misuse. This misuse has led to unreasonable beliefs, assertions, and egotistical delusions, such as, my God is the only true God, and your God is false. Or Nietzsche's famous claim, God is dead. The word, being, represents your essential nature and is easily accessible through the feeling of your own presence, the realization that, I am, rather than, I am this, or, I am that. When you identify too closely with your mind, a barrier of concepts, labels, images, words, judgments, and definitions forms, blocking genuine connections. This mental screen stands between you and yourself, others, nature, and even God. It creates the false sense of separation, making you believe there's a distinct you and a completely separate other. This illusion causes you to forget the fundamental truth that Beneath the surface of appearances and distinct forms, you are interconnected with all that exists. By, forget, I mean you lose the direct sense of this oneness as a self-evident reality. Often, people misuse their minds or don't use them at all. The mind takes control, and you may not be aware of it. Just because you can solve a crossword puzzle or build an atom bomb doesn't mean you are using your mind effectively. Ask yourself, can you switch off your mind whenever you want? If not, pay attention, observing your thoughts activates a higher level of consciousness. You'll come to realize that the things that truly matter, beauty, love, creativity, joy, and inner peace, emerge from a place beyond the confines of the mind. This awakening process will be explored in more detail as we continue the discussion. Almost everyone hears a voice, or even several voices, in their head continuously. You might have encountered people on the street talking or muttering to themselves, seemingly lost in their thoughts. This inner chatter often involves imagining things going wrong and dwelling on negative outcomes, commonly known as worry. The good news is that you can liberate yourself from this constant mental chatter. This liberation is the true freedom. You can take the first step right now by paying attention to the voice in your head. Focus on any repetitive thought patterns, those familiar records playing in your mind for perhaps many years. This is what I mean by, watching the thinker, or in simpler terms. Listen to the voice in your head and be there as the witnessing presence. As you listen to that voice, do so impartially. Avoid judging or condemning what you hear, as doing so would mean that the same voice has found its way back in. Soon, you'll realize, there is the voice. And here I am, listening to it, watching it. This realization, this sense of your own presence, is not a thought. It comes from beyond the mind. When you listen to a thought, you become aware not only of the thought itself but also of yourself as the witness of the thought. 
a new dimension of consciousness emerges, and the thought loses its power. As a thought subsides, you experience a gap in the mental system, a moment of no mind. With patience, the sense of stillness and peace will deepen. It's an ongoing process with no end. But it's crucial not to mistake it for a trance-like state. This state is not selfish but selfless, taking you beyond what you previously considered as yourself. Alternatively, instead of watching the thinker, you can create a gap in the stream of your thoughts by directing your attention to the present moment. Become intensely conscious of the now. This simple act draws consciousness away from mental activity, creating a gap of no mind where you are highly alert and aware but not entangled in thinking. You may say, this is the essence of meditation. In your everyday life, you can practice this by taking any routine activity that's usually just a means to an end and giving it your full attention, turning it into an end in itself. For example, when walking up and down the stairs. Pay close attention to every step, movement, and even your breathing. Be completely present. Similarly, when washing your hands, focus on all the sensory aspects, the sound and feel of the water, the movement of your hands, the scent of the soap, and so on. Even when getting into your car, pause for a few seconds after closing the door and observe your breath. Become aware of a silent yet powerful sense of presence. The measure of success in this practice is the degree of peace you feel within. It's about learning to disidentify yourself from your mind. But, you might wonder, isn't thinking essential for survival in the world? Essentially, it's about learning to use your mind as a tool. Give it a task, and when it's done, put it down. The challenge is that the mind creates ego, a false self formed by unconscious identification with the mind. This leads to the mistaken belief that you will cease to exist if you stop thinking. Thinking is just a small part of consciousness. Thought can't exist without consciousness, but consciousness doesn't need thought. In an enlightened state, you still use your thinking mind when necessary. But in a more focused and effective way. No mind is consciousness without thought. This is the only way to think creatively, as thought gains real power. True artists create from a place of no mind, and great scientists note that their creative thoughts arise during moments of mental quietness. When I talk about the mind, I'm not just referring to thoughts, I include emotions and all unconscious mental emotional patterns. Emotion emerges at the intersection of mind and body, it's the body's response to the mind. A reflection of your mental state in the body. For instance, a hostile thought can generate energy in the body, leading to what we recognize as anger. The perception of a threat, whether physical or psychological, causes the body to tense up. This is the physical aspect of fear. If you are unable to feel your emotions and are disconnected from them, they may manifest purely on a physical level as problems or symptoms. To understand your mind, pay attention to the body's truthful reflection. Look at or, more accurately, feel the emotion in your body. If there's a conflict between thought and emotion, the thought might be a falsehood, while the emotion holds the truth, a relative truth about your state of mind at that time, not the ultimate truth of who you are. Watching an emotion is similar to observing a thought, but emotions have a strong physical component primarily felt in the body. By allowing the emotion to exist without being dominated by it, you become the watcher, the observing presence. This practice brings the unconscious into conscious awareness. Regularly ask yourself, what's happening inside me right now? Without overanalyzing, just watch and focus your attention within. The energy of the emotion can be felt, and if there's no emotion, delve deeper into the inner energy field of your body, the gateway to being. Emotions usually represent amplified and energized thought patterns, and a feedback loop often forms between your thinking and emotions, reinforcing each other. All emotions are essentially variations of a fundamental, undifferentiated emotion rooted in the loss of awareness beyond name and form. While, fear, comes close. This emotion also encompasses a sense of abandonment and incompleteness. A term as undifferentiated as the basic emotion itself might be, pain. The more the mind tries to eliminate pain, the more intense it becomes, an intrinsic part of the challenge. Whereas, positive emotions like love and joy are integral to your natural state of inner consciousness or being. Glimpses of these emotions, or moments of deep peace, arise when there's a gap in the stream of thought. Such gaps occur rarely and usually accidentally, triggered by experiences of great beauty, 
intense physical effort, or even moments of danger. Emotions, by definition, signify disturbances. Love, joy, and peace are profound states of being, or more precisely, they are three aspects of the interconnected state with being. Importantly, they have no opposites because they originate from beyond the mind. In contrast, emotions, being part of the dualistic mind, are subject to the law of opposites. This implies that you cannot have good without bad. In the unenlightened, mind-identified state, what is often mistakenly labeled as joy is usually the fleeting pleasure side of a continuously alternating pain, pleasure cycle. Pleasure always depends on external sources, while joy arises from within. The same thing that brings you pleasure today may bring you pain tomorrow or leave you, causing pain in its absence. Similarly, what is commonly referred to as love might be pleasurable and exciting initially, but it can become an addictive clinging, a condition marked by extreme neediness that can quickly turn into its opposite. Many so-called, love, relationships, after the initial excitement wanes, often oscillate between love and hate, attraction and attack. So, in essence of the first chapter, you are not your mind, we learn about the duality of mind and being inside ourselves and to get free from it, we must observe our mind as closely as possible and need to remember that the emotions are the reflection of mind on our body.